Well, joining me now is the man of the moment, the man who is really fronting that battle of the United Nations, Mr. Saeed Akparuddin, who is India's permanent representative to the United Nations. Congratulations, Mr. Akparuddin. And tell, tell us why this win was so significant, because it was a re-election after all. But what's interesting is that India has beaten a P5 country for the first time. Tell us the significance of that. Um, uh, first of all, uh, Sonia, thank you for having me uh, here on your show. Um, let me first start by saying that um, I am only a foot soldier. Uh, what you saw was a reflection of a global effort that was made uh, to uh, mobilize our diplomatic resources uh, all over the world mm -hmm. to try and gain a victory. Now, uh, what do we gain from this victory? Um, it's the first time that a non-permanent member of the Security Council has won an election to the ICJ mm -hmm. beating a permanent member of the Security Council. It's never happened in the history of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. uh, why is this um, uh, such a big deal? It is a big deal because um, the permanent members have always had their representatives mm -hmm. on the Security Council. So, um, in a matter of uh, speaking, uh, it's a imbalanced uh, contest. It's a contest right. where uh, we have to get um, eight or nine of the ten non-permanent members. Mm -hmm. Because, understandably, those who are permanent members are willing to accommodate each other's interests. So, uh, to get a broad majority of the non-permanent members uh, in a contest with the permanent members is actually a reflection of a change in the global order. And, and that's, that's very, the big significance of it. Of course, and Not in fact, you said you're a, a foot soldier. Yes. Or uh, sorry, I di uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. That's but right. Just to pick uh, up that point. I am a trench yes. warrior. <laughs> Uh, just uh, yes. just to say sorry uh, i think my the, point is mm -hmm. that i am a trench warrior mm -hmm. just to say mr akpradeep uh, i am a because, trench warrior who reflects the natural standing of our country uh, globally um, the efforts that were done in the backdrop mm -hmm. are not visible mm -hmm. uh, i am the visible face but there was an unprecedented effort made globally um, to get this um, uh, outcome. Uh, you will not be able to see it, but because it is behind closed doors, diplomacy requires space uh, yes. and quiet to work, and that's what was done over just, the last few days. I just days, wanted to ask um, our, our leadership was leading from the front. Our um, uh, Ministry of External Affairs was coordinating in I Delhi. I just wanted to ask they were Mr. Akhuruddin on all that. I'm sorry, there's a slight delay, so I think you're hearing it in to touch my base. words are slightly in a delay. But just to ask, when you said it's actually how high level this battle was, was the fact that apparently the Prime Minister himself was taking keen interest in it, the External Affairs Minister was working the phone lines as well. Can you tell us, because really the whole drama behind Britain pulling out which were the countries which made the key difference? Which are the countries, because it wasn't just the non-permanent members you had to get, but also some of the permanent members that you had to convince about India's uh, reasons for this. So tell us about how it went from the Prime Minister onwards. Um, so Sonia, uh, we'll have to um, uh, say that both the UK and India both put in all their resources. Uh, it was not a effort which was only done by one country. Mm -hmm. uh, both the countries saw this as a diplomatic uh, um, battle uh, of monumental significance. So yes, mm -hmm. our leadership was active, so was theirs. Uh, that's number one. Uh, number two is that uh, our effort has always been that we try and gain broad-based support of our uh, partners in the developing world. Mm -hmm. That said, you're right, uh, such a victory is not only the outcome of uh, um, support from um, uh, developing countries because at key stages we did get support from 
key partners mm -hmm. in the developed world and you would appreciate I won't be able to go further down this road uh, because uh, all I can say is the coalition just grew, grew and grew uh, and the outcome reflects that growing effort and that growing coalition. One it, last point, yes. the way it ended also shows a maturity in our ties with our partners. Mm -hmm. The UK has shown graciousness in acknowledging that both of us contested within a um, uh, agreed moral and democratic framework right. uh, uh, and the values that both of us cherish. Uh, the outcome and the way it was settled uh, reflect that we continue to be partners in common quest beyond that In fact, that we had, uh, battle Boris Johnson also putting a brave face on it right now in the UK Parliament saying that, uh, well, you know, this is a, in a, the UK has always supported India. So it's lovely to see diplomacy win at the end. But just to say that's interesting, you said both are leadership. So you mean even at the British Prime Minister's level and the Indian Prime Minister's level, there was interest in this outcome. And when you say change, it's a new global order. Will this give an impetus to India's efforts to actually see the Security Council and the permanent members uh, broadened, adding uh, countries like India to that high table? Um, um, Sonia, change is the norm and it's inevitable. Mm -hmm. Every organization, if it wants to be a living organism, needs to accommodate and adjust. Mm -hmm. The United Nations is no um, uh, uh, cannot be an exception. Mm -hmm. Now, if your answer, if your question is that does change happen only by design, my response to you is sometimes opportunities arise not by design but um, by chance. Uh, if there is a subterranean effort uh, or a subterranean wave of change, it reflects in different ways. Mm -hmm. What you saw yesterday was an outcome nobody had planned for. Uh, Ten days ago, uh, we did not uh, think that this opportunity would arise. Right. What we certainly did was we utilized that opportunity to bring about a change of momentous proportions. Mm -hmm. uh, the way we ended that also speaks uh, our, of our ability to, be, to handle these situations in a mature manner. Um, uh, um, my so, British colleague and I have been in regular touch. Uh, we acknowledge that, um, that this is, is the space that we should work within. This is the framework that we work within. And right. the outcome was graciously accepted by both of us. But Mr. Mr. Akwardin, let me end with congratulating you once again. You've described yourself as a foot soldier being modest. But let me say, for being the man on the front line, from the Prime Minister onwards working for this, and it is a momentous diplomatic win for India, not just because of Justice Pandari, but also because of the implications. Thank you so much for joining me live from New York.